The next rule that we're going to look at is the quotient rule. Your, text, your textbook offers you a very nice version of the quotient rule. The important thing to remember with the quotient rule is what's in your numerator and what's in your denominator. In this particular case, f is your numerator and g is your denominator. So the derivative of the quotient f divided by g is equal to, and again, there's a lot of different ways to remember this, but I remember this as the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And again, there are a lot of different ways to remember this, and it doesn't matter to me which way you use, as long as, of course, you can remember them and you get correct answers. So if you have learned this a little bit different way before, that's okay. You can still use the quotient rule however you learned it. What's important to me is you know how to use the quotient rule, and you can do some examples and show all of your work. So for this first example, let's go ahead and take the derivative with respect to x of x squared over x minus 1. Now when we have a particular case like this, the bottom and the top cannot be simplified, so I have to use the quotient rule here. Now eventually I could flip this denominator up top and I could use a product chain rule, but we don't know the chain rule quite yet, so right now we'll stick with the quotient rule. So let's go ahead and run through what the quotient rule looks like. The quotient rule starts with the bottom function times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom function squared. So again, we actually have not done any calculus yet, but for now we have everything set up, so we should be able to whip through this one pretty quick. So the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. There's my derivative. Of course, this is the slope of the tangent line and anywhere along the graph. Now, of course, we'll want to simplify this, so I'll have uh, 2x squared minus 2x minus x squared all over x minus 1 quantity squared. There's no reason to expand this denominator because I want things to cancel and simplify. And if I, if I expand this denominator, it'll be harder to see what some of those cancellations could be. So if I go ahead and factor, or sorry, combine some like terms, I have x squared minus 2x all over x minus 1 quantity squared, and I could factor out an x, although it's not going to do me a lot of good in this particular case, but there's my derivative. This is equal to f prime of x or y prime, however you want to denote that. And again, simplifying completely is a good practice with your algebra. Let's go ahead and look at another example. In this example, let's take the derivative with respect to x of pi squared times the quantity x minus 1. Now when we're looking at this one, we need to note a couple of important things. First of all, if I look at this denominator, it says to take the derivative with respect to the variable of x. Everything else is considered constant. And of course we already know that pi is a constant, but just in case this throws you, I just drag that pi squared along. So I have one of two ways that I can work this problem. If I want to just go ahead and distribute this, that would probably be the easiest way. I'd have pi squared times x minus pi squared times 1. And then my derivative here would just be pi squared. The derivative of pi squared is 0 over here. Or I could actually use a product rule on this. And of course, this is going to kind of fall apart here because when I take the derivative of the first function, it will go towards 0. So the product rule in this particular case is the first times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first. Okay, so rewriting here, dragging along the pi squared, the derivative of x minus 1 is 1. Dragging along the x minus 1, the derivative of a constant is 0. So you can see this whole term goes towards 0, and I'm just left with pi squared. So these match. So a lot of times you can rewrite into a simpler form before you use the product or the quotient rule. Let's go ahead and look at some other examples as well. In this particular example, let's go ahead and look at the derivative with respect to x of ax plus b times abx squared plus 1. Now we have a lot of values running around here. What's constant and what is variable? Well, if we look at this, only the x is constant. Everything else is treated as a variable. So when we write this out in terms of our product rule, I have the first function times the derivative of the second function. 
And again, we're just writing out what our rules is, rules are, plus the second function times the derivative of the first function. Now working through this, we're going to start seeing the effect of these constants running around. Now, x is my only a variable, a, b are considered constant. So on this next one, when I take my derivative of a, b, x squared plus one, I bring the two out front, I decrease the exponent by one, two minus one is one, the derivative of one is zero, plus the second function, times the derivative of the first function. The derivative of ax plus b, a is a constant. The derivative of ax to the first then is just a. The derivative of b is zero. So this is my derivative. And of course, this could be simplified quite a bit as well. So after distributing and simplifying, combining like terms, this is what I get for my derivative, which I could denote as f prime of x or y prime, either one. In this last example, let's go ahead and find the equation of a tangent line to a particular function. So we want to find the equation of the tangent line to the function y equal one over x squared plus one at the point x equal negative one. Now for this particular function, remember you can't separate the denominator. You can't split this up into one over x squared plus one over one. So I have to use a quotient rule. Now eventually when we know the chain rule, you could also flip that x squared plus one up top and apply the chain rule, but for now we don't know that. To write the equation of a tangent line, you need a point and a slope. To find the slope of the tangent line, we need a derivative. So let's go ahead and look at the derivative here. The derivative is going to be the quotient rule. So I'll have the bottom function times the derivative of the top function. So bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And of course we're going to want to simplify from here because I want to evaluate the slope of this tangent line at a particular point. So let's go ahead and simplify. Actually, I haven't even taken the derivative yet, so let's go ahead and take that derivative. The derivative of one is zero, so that's nice. This whole term kind of falls away. The derivative of x squared plus one is two x, and of course this is all over x squared plus one quantity squared. Simplifying further, this whole term goes towards zero, and I'm left with a negative two x all over x squared plus one quantity squared. This is the slope of the tangent line at any point along the graph. but we want to know the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. So let's go ahead and take this and evaluate it. So we call this y prime, so let's go ahead and figure out what y prime of negative one is equal to. That means everywhere there's an x, we plug in a negative one. Now be careful down here because I'm squaring the negative. And if we have a negative times a negative, I get a positive two in the numerator. In the denominator, I have a negative one quantity squared, which is one. One plus one is two, two squared is four. So one half is my slope of my tangent line at negative one. So in order to write my equation, I need two pieces of information. I need my slope, which I just figured out was one half, and I need a point. Well, I know my x value is negative one because that was given to me. In order to find the y value, I need to run back up here real quick. So in order to figure out my y value, y is equal to one over negative one quantity squared plus one, which is going to be one half. So one, one half. Then I put this in the point slope form of the equation, y minus y one is equal to m times the quantity x minus x one and plug in my values. So I have y minus one half is equal to one half, which is my slope, x minus a negative one. And then simplifying, we have one half x minus a negative is the same as a positive one half. And then I'll move this negative one half across and I have y equal one half x plus one. This is the equation of the tangent line. to the graph of y equal one over x squared plus one at the point x equal negative one. Now if we graph this function in maple and this tangent line that we came up, this is what we get. So this red line is the graph of one over x squared plus one. And this right here, this line is the equation of the tangent line, or this is the tangent line. And you can see at negative one, if we plot this point right here, 
it does indeed look like it skims the graph at negative 1, so it looks like a, a reasonable solution. So whenever you can, it's a good idea to plot both of these in Maple and see if it looks like a reasonable type of solution. So the product rule and quotient rule allows us to take the derivative of a lot more functions than we used to be able to. A lot of times we can rewrite functions to have an easier approach to taking the derivative, so you should always consider that. And in the next uh, section we'll be looking at the chain rule as well, which will make things even easier. Thank you.